Hey, it's Greg from the Dillinger Escape Plan, and you're watching PitCam TV. This is Nick for Pitcam, and I'm so glad and I'm so proud that he's here. It's Greg, the singer of the Dillinger Escape. Hey, hey everybody. How, How are you? you doing? Good, good, good. I'm very, very well. Now, especially now that I've seen these fantastic leggings <laughs> that have given me new inspiration for stage clothes. Would you wear something like that freaky on stage? On Halloween, maybe. Okay, this, these leggings are from Black Milk. Um, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to also have the corresponding. I need the wig. Yeah, I can. We can maybe. Okay, cool. Yeah. Very good. Good. Next Halloween, guys. So, <laughs> Greg, you're here. We're gonna do it next Halloween. Actually, we will be here in October. So it's a very, it's a possibility that on. It's uh, on tape. I, I, you, you have my word that if it so happens that we play Germany on Halloween. Or around Halloween, or maybe it's. <laughs> Five days within, before. Yeah, within like a few, within a one week period in either yeah. direction that, you know, we'll at least do an encore with the get up. Oh my God, that, oh, it's going to be so cool. And <laughs> hey. Inside, I'm like crossing my fingers that we're not. Gonna it's going to happen. And now I know it will. Yeah, I just put myself in a fucking corner. Can I say fuck? Is that okay? Yes. All right, cool. Here in Germany, it's totally okay. Right on. <laughs> okay. But um, stage outfit is cool. You can do that. And we will see that. Perfect. I'm looking forward. Now we are talking about the new album. It's coming up uh, in May. And um, yeah, one of us is the killer. Um, who's the killer? Um, actually, that title refers to uh, kind of being in a destructive, codependent relationship and realizing that, because uh, what happens is people start to, uh, you start to point the finger at the other person and be like, this person, you, what, why are you doing this? You're doing this to me, stop being this way. And then you go talk to your friends and you bitch about you know, whoever, your friend, your girlfriend. Uh, your guitar player and uh, everyone tells you what you want to hear and they're like yeah that person sucks they're doing this they're doing that but that person's doing the same thing and they're going to all their friends and so you're starting to build up these walls around one another and that's actually very destructive and then uh, you, you, you know you're just building up your own ego and then you, when you come back to the relationship you're these two you're like fortresses that are trying to tear one another down and that was happening in my life in two very important relationships to me it was happening with me and my girlfriend and it was happening with Ben, ben and I and uh, over the last couple of years, you know, Ben and I, who have been in a band together for 13 years, had, had started to be, our personal relationship had started to deteriorate. And I think simultaneously, we both came to the realization at the same time that it was both of our faults, not just like you doing this, you doing that. It's like actually both of us are at fault. And the second we acknowledged that it was 50-50 responsibility and that we were instantly better because you, you stop trying to attack the other person and you start being like uh, you know one of us is the killer is like saying that like yeah we're we're gonna we're trying to win all these little battles but it doesn't matter because if we win these stupid little ego bullshit battles we're gonna kill the whole thing we're gonna kill this beautiful thing that we've created together just by having fucking ego bullshit going on you know and once we let that go we were fine Okay, cool, cool title. Um, it's actually saying that we're actually one of us is a serial killer, and we've murdered a bunch of people, and we're just putting that out into the world, letting people know <laughs> that one of us is a murderer, and we're trying to come clean about it, but mm. we don't feel comfortable okay. saying who. <laughs> cool. Um, I, I've heard the the album just um, just the sample video, which is released on YouTube, right. which was really really hard to find here in Germany because I know. of yeah. It's but annoying. I find it. I, yeah, it's, it's 2013. You should be able to watch something anywhere. I didn't know that until recently. Mm -hmm. That when when we came over here, I so people started telling me that like the the, the preview video and like was blocked and and I was just like, Ugh, you know, from from the original upload, it's blocked. You can't. Yeah, you I can't don't. Watch. I don't know. That's annoying. What is what is GMA? G E M A. What is that? Is yeah. that like? Yeah, <laughs> that is a pretty hard thing to explain. It's a pretty. Um, it's a company who takes care of the musicians' rights, okay. but I guess they're like taking too much care and yeah, care, don't care about the listeners. Right, uh, that's the thing is you're screwing you're you're screwing the band and the fans over. Yeah. It's no one's winning. Like people are just trying to watch a fucking video. It's yeah. not like you're trying to steal something, you know. Yeah. 
Uh, but I finally I found it and um, I've, I've watched it and I've seen it and I heard the music, which, okay, it's a pretty cool teaser, but it's just snippets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and but the snippets are not indicative of the, the entire songs in some instances. So it's, it was really tough. We had to pick 30 seconds of each song and uh, it was really hard to choose because there's parts of songs that sound nothing like the rest of the song. So it's like, but I like that, you know, maybe we'll do another one, you know, in a month mm -hmm. and use 30 other seconds and just really confuse people that they're the same songs, you know. Yeah. Especially uh, your songs are pretty complicated and so, yeah, you can't. So, but tell us something about the new album. You you did it with the exact same producing yeah. team. Um, was it the, the thought of never change a winning team thing? Um, yeah, I mean, we speak a really weird language together. Obviously, our music is not normal music and uh, when, you know, we speak kind of it's like speaking Japanese or something at this point like if you speak like fifth level Japanese with someone why try to get someone who's never spoke Japanese before to come into your conversation you know like we're not going to gain anything from it he's only going he's going to be the person that gains something from it you know he's going to get better at speaking Japanese but we're going to have to sit around trying to teach this guy how to speak Japanese and that's kind of like what it's like with Steve Steve has done every single one of our records and uh, Steve's in a really interesting position because he you know, produces our albums, so he's very close to us, and we live really close to one another, so we're friends, but he also produces a bunch of bands in between our records, and we go on tour and do a bunch of stuff, so he has this weird mix of being able to be objective because of the time we spend apart, and being really close to us because he's grown with us the entire way, so, and uh, we because of that, we have a really, not only do we com have the same language, but we have a creative respect for one another, where if he makes me Sometimes he just really beats me up, you know, he'll be like, make me do a part 50 times, you know, just to, out of, just to break me, you know what I mean? So I, I start to actually go crazy. And then the 51st time when I'm literally really pissed off and about to lose my mind, that's when the, the good one comes out and then he'll be like, okay, that was it, you know? So we, and, but if someone else did that to me at this point, I'd be like, fuck you, man, I'm not singing this again. So like we have a certain respect for one another that we have developed, you know? Do you need someone to someone that pisses you up, but you said you, you need Steve for that, but how do you come in that mood to record your vocal parts? I know how to, I know how I do my vocal parts if I'm in the studio, right. but what are you doing when you're freaking out in front of that microphone, right. not in front of thousands of people? Well, just I've never screamed not into a microphone. Like I have I've no idea how to scream right now. Like I can't, I'm, I've never, it's not an effect to me. Like, I don't know how like death metal people scream quietly. Like I'm actually really loud. Like I mangle the microphone stand in the vocal booth. Like there's like, I'm very physically expressive and I can't turn that off. So I, I right away when I start screaming, get really pissed off because I'm, it's like just some, it's an intense thing like pouring out of you, you know? And I write our lyrics really close to recording. So I'm still very emotionally connected to what I'm saying. I don't like writing early because how can you be, you know, if you write something and then six months later you read it back, that's not emotionally close to you anymore. You might not even remember what the hell you're talking about. So then when you go to sing it, you're just consonants and vowels. There's no soul in there. But if you wrote it a week before, you, it still means something to you, you know, and you're still probably pissed off and upset about that situation when you go to record. So you can summon it really easily. So, you know, doing it like that allows you to kind of take a snapshot of your emotions at the time, more so than just words and consonants and vowels, you know. But if you're if you're in front of that microphone freaking out, yeah. going crazy, or you just I, I can't imagine how that is. You're standing there in front of the microphone, or yeah, yeah. I mean, it really is much different. Even Steve is like you know recording you is much different than recording other singers because of how emotionally intense you become. I mean, I've definitely like you know been to the point where I had to like stop and like walk outside because I was getting too worked up and like shaking and like fucking ready to throw up and stuff like that from like from having that much intensity come out of you by the time you go on tour it's not the same touring it does become you know over time just consonants and vowels and, and just energy from performing you know you certainly aren't still working through something from five years ago like when you go on tour so th that's a different thing but yeah recording definitely is like a very psychologically intense experience i feel like for bands like us have you ever thought about doing a, or did maybe you did a um, studio diary thing, um, taping that, what happened in the studio, the, the magic that happens while recording a, a new album? Yeah, we talk about it every time, and then we never do it. 
because it corrupts it a little bit you know like you act different when there's a camera on you you would have to really have something sitting in a corner rolling constantly mm -hmm. like and that's really expensive to do like but if you try to do it for like an hour if you're recording and then all of a sudden someone's like hey greg i want to get video of you recording like it immediately even even if it's one percent you one percent are different you know what i mean and that's like i want i'm i'm not you know trying to be a uh, an actor you know or a theater singer like i i want people to hear what i'm doing i don't give a shit whether you can see it you know we're not funny we're not like joking around and stuff like that like we're just trying to get shit done you know so i don't care about cameras you know okay um the first single is called prancer um <laughs> i'm trying to find out what that means because the only translation I found was or the only meaning is that it's a reindeer from Santa Claus. Well, it's a really gay sounding name, right? Like Prancer is like the gayest word of all time. So I really like fucking with people and I really hate the amount of like homophobia in like metal and stuff like that. So that song is like one of the most brutal songs on the record. So I was like, how funny would it be if uh, we had to force a bunch of people that like brutal music to admit that they like a song called Prancer? So it's kind of a little joke, just fucking with people. And uh, I mean, I like knowing that now there's a song that's really aggressive and sinister that has, that has actually changed the connotation in the heads of people of a word that is really kind of fucking flamboyant, okay, yeah. you know? Like, so now there's all these people that got to go around, you know, that are tough guys that are like, I, you know, have you heard the New Deal in your skate plan song? That song's brutal. And like people are like, what's it called? Prancer. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually really funny. So it's probably the softest song on the record has the most brutal title. Yeah. Like One of Us is the Killer is the softest song yeah. on the record. And Prancer is one of the heavier ones. So that's kind of funny. Ah, OK, here we, in Germany, we didn't get that. <laughs> it's like contrast. I think contrast yeah. is more interesting. If you have a yeah. brutal song and you call the brutal song, go fuck yourself. That's not as interesting as if you have you yeah. know, a peaceful song and you call it Go Fuck Yourself, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. I, I, I really like taking people to different places, you know? Yeah. There's one song on, on the record called A Hero of the Soviet Union. Right. Is that, um, tell us something about that song. Well, all, none of the lyrics have anything to do with the titles. All the titles were written in one minute. So, uh, I was just high and I came up with all the titles right away. I saw them all in a row. I was like, these are all our titles, 11 titles in a row. I wrote them all down. Those are the titles in the record. Are you kidding? No, 100%. Oh my God. And, uh, that was without any lyrics so and then okay. and most of the titles have to do with ben and i's relationship one i uh, hear uh nothing's funny it was about me and ben had gotten to a point where nothing was funny paranoia shields is about how ben and i had built up shields around ourselves because we were paranoid about one another the threat posed by nuclear weapons is you know obvious you know if you have nuclear weapons it's like a cold war him and i Uh, the hero of the Soviet Union, again, is like a reference to the Cold War, which was kind of like what our relationship had become. There's a lot of stuff, you know, the title is a lot, understanding decay, you know, understanding how a relationship can d d deteriorate. That All those, t those titles all reference Ben and I's relationship, but, but none of the lyrics do. So. Okay. But that, that sounds like, is, is your re relationship with Ben the most intense relationship you have in your life absolutely yeah i mean we were talking about it the other day and uh we're, we're we're beyond friends like we're beyond co-workers neither one of us has a brother and i think we have psychologically transferred that onto one another and that's the only thing i can describe it as it's like we are both so passionate about the dillinger escape plan and we're both so intense people like on stage and when we're writing and in life and uh we grew up together we we started when i was like 20 years old and now we're like in our 30s And uh, we've lived together almost the entire time. Like, imagine if you went from first grade to 12th sitting next to the same kid and you went home together every day. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like what we had to do is go through childhood and become adults together. And we're drastically different people personally. Like, he's very much a control freak, you know, very uh, kind of like um, very... Uh, It's a super, con super control freak, super self-contained, very everything is very meticulous with him. And um, he's straight edge, he's vegan, you know, and uh, I'm a much more erratic person. I'm a very explosive, kind of like somewhat bipolar. Um, you know, I, I do drugs, I eat animals, you know what I mean? Like, so we develop, we different people. So personally, we started to not understand one another anymore. And that's where the it. And now we think it's em almost embarrassing that we allowed ourselves to get to that point of not understanding one another. But, uh, but now that we've gotten through it, I feel like we have such a bond between us, you know, that we will, we will, 
you know, I, I think we want to kill one another fairly quickly, but five minutes later we can go get coffee together. You know, I can, I can be like, go fuck yourself. I can't fucking stand you. And then five minutes later, be like, hey, man, do you want to go get coffee? And it's like, this, that's a really strange for outsiders. Outsiders come in and, and they hang out with us like for an hour. And they're like, you guys have a really weird relationship. They're like, you're so blunt with one another and then so friendly. That, but you have to be like, we don't have time to like, I know you, man. Like, don't fucking, you know, I can tell you to go fuck yourself. I've known you forever. And that doesn't mean I don't love you. It just means that I'm, you know, it's like. I guess that relationships, uh, that relationship writes the best stories. You, yeah, yeah. you wrote a complete album. Exactly. You know, I, I mean, I feel like him and I are on some kind of a journey together. You know, and uh, it's really strange. It goes deeper than any girlfriend I've ever had, any friend I've ever had. Like, there's not many people that can make me almost like literally start to cry, like talking about like how, you know, because of how it, uh, actually emotional like the the bond is between the two of us. You know. Cool. Good to have someone like that, as, or yeah, to meet a person like that. Besides that, you work with, or you worked with so many bands and artists. You did something with Aesthetic Lullaby, Every Time I Die, right. Architects and stuff. Is there a artist or a band you want to work with? Um, I mean, there's a ton. Yeah, I mean, I would love to like do. There's, I love collaborating. You know, like you grow so much because you get taken out of your comfort zone. And uh, it's almost doesn't even matter whether the end result is good. The, the, the point is just to collaborate and make yourself learn something new in the process, you know. And I think in rock and metal, that doesn't happen a lot. Like in, in like hip hop and jazz and stuff like that, they do it all the time. You know, there's like, you know, Kanye West and Jay-Z did a whole album together. Like they didn't just do one song, did a whole album together. You see rappers jump on each other's songs constantly. Jazz guys will do, you know, here's this guy and this guy for one record. It doesn't need to be a band. You don't need to do it forever. You just have to do one record, you know, and that doesn't happen that much. So right now I've got a lot of stuff in, in a lot of various collaborations in the works. Like I've got a record almost fully done with me and one of the guys that's in Nine Inch Nails. I've got a record almost done with me, Max Cavalera and Troy from Mastodon. Um, so it's, it's right now it's tough for me to say that I want to add anything more, but, um, But if you can choose anyone in the world, who would that be? Um, I think us as a band, we would really like to do something with like Aphex Twin, you know, mm -hmm. or someone like that, or maybe uh, um, um, like with like Massive Attack mm -hmm. or something oh, like okay. that, you know, um, something that's like so far away from what we are yeah. that it would create something interesting, you know. I mean. It, oh, On it, on like a common level, like I'm sure people would like to hear like us and Converge or something do like a song together, and that would be cool. But like it wouldn't, we wouldn't grow as much from it, yeah. you know. Cool. Um, yeah, the new album is coming up, and maybe there's a new tour coming up. You're doing shows in America, but you come back to Europe festivals. What's what's up next? Yeah, we're doing a tour in America in the spring, and then we come back for like three weeks to do fests, or two or three weeks. And then we do another tour uh, called Summer Slaughter in the U.S. over the summer. And then October, November, we're going to spend the whole time over here. October, you're coming back here to Peru. <laughs> then over. I invite you to my closet. And, yeah, yes, we're going to come to your closet and we're going to loot it. And that's going to be our whole get up. You know, that's going to be the point of the tour, actually, is just to, yeah. to do it. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited and looking forward to your album. And I'm so glad that we have you and I wish you all the best for Can the we call our record One of Us is the Drag Queen? Yes. For, for now on? Yeah. Or one of us is the cross-dresser? Yep, yep. Okay, cool. That would be me, obviously. Yep, yep. Okay. Greg, thanks a lot for having us. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. It means a lot.